After the great success of my last video, I immediately started researching other bizarre topics to impress my brand new subscribers. I wanted to find something interesting that hadn't already been covered a million times before by others. I discovered that in the genre of internet mysteries, this task was nearly impossible. But I prevailed, stumbling upon a strange website that led me down a supremely intriguing rabbit hole. I had found a reddit thread where people were sharing their favorite, real internet mysteries and was parsing through the hundreds of replies. I felt my anxiety intensify with each discarded topic. Hoax. Old news. Creepy pasta. This just wouldn't do for Uliku's viewers, the large majority of which are not subscribed to the channel. <clears throat> I needed only the best for them. I was one hoax away from giving up when I saw a comment by a user that stoked my curiosity. This person had expressed that a certain web page was a guaranteed rabbit hole. That was right on my alley, so I eagerly pasted the name into Google, full of hope and excitement. After clicking on the Google result, a mysterious file was immediately downloaded onto my computer. It appeared as a media file, and I'll be honest, I was pretty afraid to click on it. I lowered my volume and even took off one headphone before doing so. I felt pretty foolish when I discovered the download was a MIDI file, a type of audio file that the website was using to play music on its web pages. I was definitely not prepared for what was waiting for me on the actual web page. This is the Yvette's Bridal Formal website. After getting past the initial sensory overload, I found that the site stuck pretty close to what it advertised. Further down the page were pictures of women in wedding dresses, wedding magazines, and wedding rings. Although this was a bit out of place. The website overall was not very organized, but it had a certain charm to it that I liked. I hovered my mouse over the text at the top of the web page and was shocked to find that almost all of it was clickable. I had 20 links in front of me that I could explore. Naturally, I clicked on the neon green Enter Yvette's link nestled neatly in the middle of the page. Many of the pages play music when you click on them, and this page was no exception. I was met with a song that slowly increased in intensity and volume, unnerving me. This page was the same story as the home page. Multiple links that could be clicked appeared on the page. Snippets of information regarding events were also strewn about, like a map of how to get to the store, or the fact that they were open until 6 p.m. I was going to click on a link titled Tuxedos, but wait, a psychological thriller. A tough decision, and it got even tougher when I saw the link for an award-winning chocolate cake recipe further down the page. This is the dilemma you run into when visiting the Yvette Bridal Formal website. I estimate there are hundreds of links across all pages on the domain. As I clicked link after link, my astonishment grew at the individuality of each page I was led to. These were not lazy links that redirected you to a popular YouTube video or some random external website. Each link had been meticulously customized to fit the theme of the text that had advertised it. I was dumbfounded, thinking of the sheer time and effort something like this would have taken. I spent quite a bit of time snooping around the site and would like to share some of my favorite pages with you. The recipe index page that lists directions for making tons of baked goods, such as carrot cake and lemon bars. A page titled, Maiko, please click here, which leads to various painted portraits of geisha with hauntingly beautiful music playing in the background. And my personal favorite, a page titled Drawing Friends, click here, which leads to a page showcasing art that a local takeout restaurant has doodled on their carryout containers. I mean, come on, how peculiar can you get? At this point, I bet you're dying to explore this labyrinth of a website for yourself. You definitely should, but don't you want to know the complex history behind the creation and complete derailment of the site first? Stick around, and I'll fill you in. First and foremost, the website I was exploring is a mirror of the original. The original website was taken down sometime in early 2012, to the disappointment of many users. As is the case with many strange internet happenings, users on 4chan were the first to catch on to the unconventional site. Following this, Yvette's bridal formal began gaining lots of traction on Reddit. 
this 2010 r funny post is exemplative of most threads discussing the website, with users expressing disbelief at its design. User Elegy Legacy was around for the website's gradual increase in popularity, offering their thoughts on the website's history. As with everything on the internet, Reddit seems to have discovered Yvette's about a year after 4chan, and they already went there and made a mess of things. They elaborated further in another comment, explaining that users from 4chan's paranormal board had traveled to the store and spoken with the owners there. The users had claimed to be reporters for an online magazine covering a suspicious link between the government and aliens. Elegy Legacy had found proof on the Yvette's bridal formal website to back up their claim, pointing to a series of blog posts that had been written in 2009 on the site. Though I couldn't track down these posts on the mirrored version of the site, I was able to find proof that 4chan users had visited the location in person. A 2018 archived 4chan thread that inquired on the meaning of the site offered a clue. There I found a picture from 2008 of a user that had posed next to the sign the Yvette's Bridal Formal store had erected. Now we knew many things. The store actually existed, and the website was in fact created to help them sell wedding products. But large questions remained unanswered. Who was behind the creation of the site? What had caused the website to change in appearance from this to this? We can start with the first question. Rumors had been circulating that the website had been created by a family member of the store owners. In many of these posts, users alleged that the family member, oftentimes claimed to be their son, had a mental disability. During my time on Yvette's website, I came across a page that advertised getting to know the person painting all the portraits on the site. A man named Sean Terrence Best claimed to be the author and fashioner of Yvette's site on this new page. What was the truth about his involvement with the site, and what internet rumors had spiraled out of control? Do you remember the idea I shared at the beginning of this video, where I expressed that finding an unexplored internet mystery was nearly impossible? Well, this website is no exception to that rule. In 2018, YouTube channel Atrocity Guide created a fantastic video highlighting their experience with the site. In their video, they explained that they actually reached out to Sean Terrence Best via email to ask him a few questions. Atrocity Guide was told by Sean that he had been hired to create a website for the bridal shop, but upon seeing the site that he had built, the store was not satisfied. The shop proceeded to cut ties with Sean, and they both went their separate ways. Sean, however, did not want to give up on the work he had done, and so continued his adventure with the site. My questions of who had created the site and for what reason had now been answered. And now it was time to look into Sean Terrence Best, the supposed disturbed family member of the store owners. To that point, I was unable to find any information backing the claim that Sean was related to them in any way. With this fact discovered, the rumors we had covered before began to unravel. In fact, a quick Google search of Sean's name helped me to confirm the hunch I had as I moved from page to page on his website. The man's genius had certainly been misunderstood. For starters, he is an accomplished writer, and a very eloquent one at that. Just take a look at this excerpt from an answer he had written on Quora when asked about short stories that influenced his writing. Some short stories which altered my approach to the craft of writing. So strong were the subliminal compositional influences of these legendary literary masterpieces that when I wrote the supernatural fantasy about a conjure woman who spread the sinister power. You know that he is an artist, as is evidenced by the numerous creative works on his website. He is talented in oil painting and even dabbles in pencil sketches. And it doesn't stop there. Ashan has even ventured into the fashion industry, designing clothes based on his original art. In this case, the rumors about Sean had turned out to be completely false, although he is a bit eccentric. I remember what I felt when I first stumbled upon the Yvette's Bridal Formal website. I was puzzled, excited, and a little anxious. There was a sense of wonder and confusion as I tried to make sense of what I was experiencing. 
And now, that sense of mystery and eagerness to find answers is gone. And yet, for some reason, I feel that's okay. Because although the mystery is solved and the chase is over with, I still feel something when visiting the website. It has become something I can appreciate more completely, now knowing the history behind it. And the feelings of fascination and delight have only intensified. Thank you, Sean, for creating this website. I am very glad I was able to experience it, and I hope many others will for years to come. Thank you for watching my video. Please follow the link in the description to the website, after you've subscribed and liked this video, of course. Let me know what strange and interesting pages you find on your journey. Catch you later.